The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this distance learning session. My name is Efuba Kanto Evelyn, your geography teacher. Today we are going to have a lesson for advanced level geography. Last class, we treated the historical evolution of the world's population. And you went home with an assignment. And this assignment was to draw a diagram showing population change as a system. For the correction of this assignment, you can see it on the board. Population change is an open system with inputs, processes, and outputs. As you see on the diagram, the inputs into the system are births and immigration. The outputs are deaths and emigration. Births and deaths operate to give natural change. In other words, births minus, minus deaths will give you the natural change. On the other hand, immigration and emigration will also operate to give you net migration. And in other words, immigration minus emigration equals to net migration. Natural change can be positive or negative. Natural change is positive when births are more than deaths and negative when deaths are more than births. Immigration or net migration, sorry, can also be negative or positive. Net migration is positive when the number of immigrants are more than the number of emigrants and negative when the number of emigrants are more than the number of immigrants. Natural change plus net migration will give total population as we see here. So natural change and net migration are the processes that interact to give total population. On the other hand, we have outputs. We've already mentioned them, deaths and emigration. Births and immigration will give us the number of people that enter into a community and deaths and emigration, the number of people who go out of the community. Our lesson today, the title of our lesson will be Population Growth. For the lesson of our view, we'll have learning activities. We'll look at the learning objective story, the previous knowledge. This will be followed by the situation in real life. We shall look at the learning activities. Then at the end, we're going to have some exercises, or an exercise, and then an assignment. 
for the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, learners should explain notions on population growth and examine population change system. For the previous knowledge, learners already have knowledge on the historical evolution of the world population. And we are going to have a test on the previous knowledge to find out if the lesson that was taught last time or last session was well understood by everybody. Fill in the blank spaces with the following words. Medical, industrial, agricultural. The questions are here, question one. Between 8000 BC and AD 1750, world population increased from 500 million to 800 million. This was probably caused by the Dash Revolution. Question two. Population growth rate increased from 0.5% in the early 20th century to 2% in the mid 20th century as a result of the Dash Revolution. The third question. After AD 1750, the population grew 10 times faster than in the past as a result of the Dash Evolution. So we go on to the answers. Between 8000 BC and AD 1750, world population increased from 500 million to 800 million. This was probably caused by the agricultural revolution. That was when man settled down. Between 8000 BC and AD 1750, world population increased from 500 million to 800 million. This was probably caused by, the answer here is, the agricultural revolution. And it is at this time that man domesticated plants and animals and was able to produce more food which could sustain the growing population. For question two, population growth rate increased from 0.5% in the early 20th century to 2% in the mid 20th century as a result of, the answer here is the medical revolution. Medical revolution. This revolution came after 1945, after the Second World War, it started in Europe and North America and then finally spread to other countries of the world. This reduced the death rate in the world as a whole. Question three, after AD 1750, the population grew 10 times faster than in the past as a result of, the answer is industrial, industrial revolution. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in real life, what is happening? You have learned in your geography lessons that one should have only the number of children that one can be able to care for. In your neighborhood, your father has 25 children with his three wives and your uncle 36 children with his four wives. Questions. What is the problem? That is the first question. Second question. What advice can you give to your elder siblings on raising smaller families? We shall be seeing this in, in the course of our lesson. We've got to answer this 
questions. We begin with our lesson. We're first going to look at the notions on population growth. And we shall begin by defining some terms, some basic terms which are very, very important in population growth. The first one is population growth. What is population growth? Population growth is simply an increase in the population of an area. It may be a region, it may be a country within a specific period of time. Secondly, there is population growth rate. Population growth rate is the rate at which the population is increasing or decreasing. And this can be due to natural change and net migration as taking into consideration the total population. It is the rate at which population grows. Either it is increasing or it is decreasing. The rate at which population increases or decreases as a result of natural change and net migration. We have already said that these two interact to give the total population. The next one is population change. What is population change? It's just a change in population. It may be a negative change. It may be a positive change. A negative change comes when population increases in number and a negative change comes when population decreases in number. This can also come as a result of natural change in population and net migration because we already said that these two interact to bring about a change in population where there is a positive natural change in other words births are more than deaths and also there is a positive net migration in other words immigration is more than emigration these two will interact to give a positive change in population on the other hand, where there is a natural decrease in population and a negative uh, population balance or migration balance, there's going to be a negative change in population. In other words, population will tend to reduce. The next one is population explosion. That's the last one here. What is population explosion? Population explosion is just a situation where the population grows so fast. Population is growing exponentially and the resources are not keeping pace with the growing population. This ushers in a lot of problems because normally the resources will be in short supply and so people will not be able to survive comfortably. We move on to the patterns of population growth. What are the various patterns? How does population grow? There are various patterns, and the first one is exponential growth. Exponential growth in population is just a very rapid growth in population. That is when population is growing very fast. And as we said, resources are not keeping pace. This is a characteristic of developing countries. Population is growing very fast as a result of high birth rates and declining death rates. So people are not able to have what they can live on to make life comfortable. Secondly, there is slow growth. Slow growth is typical of developed countries. This is a situation where deaths and births are at a low level and population is increasing very slowly. And in this case, the pyramids are regressive, unlike in the first case of exponential growth where pyramids are progressive with a broad, with broad basis as a result of high birth rates. 
Thirdly, there is zero growth. There is zero growth. Zero growth is just a situation where population is not growing. In that case, population is in equilibrium. Births and deaths, I'm sorry, births and immigration are equal to deaths and immigration. So population is not actually growing, but this is population in equilibrium. So there is zero growth. Lastly, we have negative population growth. This is a situation where deaths are more than births. But these are always at a low level because it is characteristic of developed countries. Deaths and births fluctuate between 8% and 12%. Births are between 8 and 12% and deaths are between 8 and 10% and deaths are between 10 and 12%. So the population is declining. Now what we should note here is that even when there is negative population growth, there is migration and so population increases a bit. Now, this is a diagram on exponential population growth. It's an exponential population growth curve. Here we have the population size. Population size is on the vertical axis. And time. Time on the horizontal axis. So we see that with time, population starts growing. And after some time, population grows very fast. This we can link it to the demographic transition model when we look at exponential growth. At a low level of population growth, you have high birth rates and high death rates. And when population starts increasing very fast, it means that birth rates are still high and death rates have started declining. In that case, population is growing. So this is an exponential population growth curve, which is typical of developing countries, where population is growing faster than, its, than the resources. Also, exponential population growth is illustrated here, diagrammatically, with a population pyramid. These are pyramids that are typical of developing countries. They are progressive or expansive pyramids. See the pyramid? The pyramid has a broad base. The base is broad. The pyramid has concave sides and a very narrow apex. These are pyramids typical of developing countries where there are high birth rates and many children are born, so populations are youthful populations. And the narrow apex is attributed with the fewer aged or the fewer old people that are found in these populations because of low life expectancy. Okay, this is a population pyramid which represents slow population growth. This type of pyramid is typical of developed countries and the characteristics are that it's a small base. This small base is as a result of stricter birth control, women's emancipation, the fact that women are not only child bearers, they also have their own careers to live or to follow. Then we have a bulging middle as a result of a high number of adults, those who moved from childhood into this, from the youthful age group, into this group because of high life expectancy, and others who have come in 
from other countries to swell the number of adults in this particular country. Then the top or the apex of this pyramid is broader than the apex of the progressive pyramid, showing that many more people reach old age in developed countries as a result of good medical facilities, good dieting, and generally high standards of life. So this pyramid takes on a bell shape. Now for negative growth, this is a pyramid representing negative growth. We have said that when growth is negative, it means that births are a little bit higher than deaths, but all of them at, are at a very low level. And in that case, population is not actually growing. Reason why, you see, the number of people in the youthful age group is a little bit higher than the number of people in the old age group. When we see this bulging middle, it is mostly as a result of the adults of that country and those who come in. But we know that negative growth is when birth rate is a little bit higher than death rate. And this is typical of developed countries. For zero population growth, we said that zero population growth is when population is in equilibrium. In other words, births and immigration are equal to death and emigration. And so population is not growing. This is a pyramid which indicates that kind of a population. And these zero population growth pyramids are also typical of developed countries. The case of Germany in 2017, as we see on our screen. Now we have a diagram of world population growth from 1950 to 2050. It means that there have been projections into the future because we are still in 2021. We know that it is not easy to have an exact number of people in the world. So population projections are always made. When we look at these bar graphs, we will see that from 1950, generally to 2050, population has continued to grow. Population has continued to grow. And much growth was between 1975 and year 2000, and year 2000 and 2030, which means that population is still growing exponentially. And this population growth, as we see here, where you have exponential growth, is typical of developed countries. So we see that population has never declined. Generally, population has continued to grow and will continue to grow. As of today, population is estimated at about 7.9 billion, and by 2050, it may be a little bit above 9 billion. So population has continued and will continue to grow. Now, there is something that is known as doubling time in population growth. What is doubling time? Doubling time is the number of years a country's population takes to double in size. If Cameroon's population, for instance, if Cameroon, Cameroon's population is at 20 million today, how many years will the population of Cameroon take to become 40 billion, 40 million, sorry, 40 million. So that is doubling time. How is it calculated? 
it is calculated by using 70. You take 70, which is a constant, and you divide by the population growth rate. For instance, if the population growth rate of our country is 2%, the doubling time will be 70 divided by 2, which will give us 35 years. So the population of Cameroon will take 35 years to double in size. So that is doubling time. And as we can see, population is growing very fast and population of certain countries, certain African countries and Asian countries have doubled with time. Next, we're going to move on to the population change system. We had seen it because it was an assignment that was given you to do at home. So we are now seeing it as part of our lesson. Population change is an open system with inputs, births, and death and, and uh, immigration, sorry. Processes, natural change and net migration. Output, deaths and immigration. Births and immigration will constitute the number of people that enter into a community through the natural way births and through the entry of people from other countries. So those are the inputs and the outputs are deaths and immigration. So natural change comes from subtracting deaths from births. And natural change, as we said, can be positive or negative. It is positive when births are more than deaths and negative when deaths are more than births. We move on to migration. Here you have immigration, the entry of people into a country and emigration, the departure of people from a state. These two will interact to give the net migration or the migration balance. The balance can be positive when the number of immigrants are more than emigrants, and the balance can be negative when the emigrants are more than the immigrants. Now, natural change and net migration will interact to give the total population. Natural change plus net migration will give the total population. Now, we're going to move on to our exercise. Level the arrows showing population change system with the right terms from the list. Deaths, immigration, population growth, births, emigration, natural increase. So we have the diagram here. We have those terms there. Question two. A certain country had a population of 20 million in 2019 and a growth rate of 2.5%. How long will it take for that country's population to double in size. For question one, we had seen various terms or words that we're supposed to label the arrows with. The first arrow here shows the births. The next arrow below shows immigration. 
These are the inputs into the population system. On the other hand, this arrow shows deaths, and the arrow, the other arrow, the next arrow below shows emigration. And these are the outputs from the population system. For the second question, you are asked to calculate the doubling time of a country whose population growth rate is 2.5%. As we said, you are going to divide 70, which is a constant, by 2.5, and we have 28 years. So that country's population will take 28 years to double in size. So we have the answer here, 28 years. Now we have a summary of our learning activities. The world's population is growing rapidly. It is growing exponentially. And this has an effect on developing countries because the population is increasing very fast and resources are not keeping pace. So people are actually not living comfortable lives. Birth, death, and migration determine population change. That is just what we have seen on the population change system. Populations are dynamic. Their numbers, distribution, structures, and movements constantly change over time and space. Populations are not static. They change in their distributions, they change in their structures, they change over time in their numbers, and they also change over space because of the mobility of people. Lastly, population change is an open system because it has inputs, processes, and outputs. We have come to the end of our lesson so you go on, you're going to go home with an assignment for the next session. You will draw a diagram representing the determinants of population growth. Draw a diagram representing the determinants of population growth. Here we have our references. We have references, Fellman, Jettis and Jettis, Human Geography, Landscapes of Human Activities, Tata Celestine, Advanced Population Geography, and WAF, David WAF, Integrated Approach. And then we also have, we've had some information, like some of those diagrams from Google. Next lesson will be on the determinants of population growth. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege majang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen